Hey, how are you? Well, this is my painting class, my second painting class. So if you want to paint along with me, uh, search painting class number two on my website. And you can print this image out. And I'll go over again how we get this image on our board. Just, uh, just for a couple of more classes until everybody sort of knows what I'm talking about. Now, a little bit about this painting. It kind of fought me a little bit. I had a tough time with it. I thought it was going to be a lot easier than this. And in fact, when, when you're painting along, because uh, I looked at the video and I thought, geez, maybe I should have stopped painting right around a minute four and a half or four minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, and in fact, if you uh, are going to paint, maybe you want to do two paintings and stop at the four minute and 30 second mark and then uh, do another painting and go the whole distance. Uh, so anyway, it, it turned out to be a pretty good painting or, or something I was happy with. And sort of my test for that is when I do a little painting like this, I'll, I'll bring it in the house and I have a little frame set up on a table uh, with an easel and I'll just put it in that frame and if I can walk by it a few times without getting angry, well then I feel like I've got an okay painting. So enough said, let's start painting. Well, I almost forgot. Uh, the way you get the drawing is you pull this image off of my website, so search uh, painting class number two, and the drawing is in sort of a blue-gray ink and then just trace that drawing with a charcoal pencil. Trace the whole drawing. And once you have the drawing traced, cut along the black lines. And then place the drawing on a white board, a board that you've primed white with gesso or white paint. And I'm using masonite. Sometimes I'll use quarter inch plywood. But if you don't have any of that, you can just paint on primed cardboard. And now that the drawing is on the white panel, I'll hold it in place and then just go over where those lines are with my finger and now we're ready to start painting. All right, well, let's just get started on the sky here. So I'm going to come down to the palette. I've got a nice new palette, it's just a piece of plywood. Um, so I'm using a little cerulean blue and some white. And I think uh, the big the big thing that a lot of people do when they're thinking about a sky is they always take a little white and a little blue and they make this light blue and it looks a little bit more like cotton candy than, than a sky. So now I've got that light blue here and I'm going to take a little burnt umber and put that in there. Knock that color down a little bit. And just to get started I'll put a little paint thinner on my brush so I can really wash that sky in. You can see this side of the sky, if we look at the picture, this side is a brighter blue right over here. So I'll try to brighten that up in a second. I'll get a little more paint thinner on my brush and just wash that color all around. I might throw a little in the beach there too. See the beach? It's a, sort of a tan color, but then I've got these gray blues here. Then over here we have a, a really light blue, it's sort of a reflection of the sky right next to the white water. I think I'm going to deal with the beach now. So if we go and take a look at that, it's kind of a warm yellowish. You've got some darker browns over here and you've got some real light happening right here. So those are all things to keep in mind. So I'm going to go back to the palette and we'll pick up some of this white. You can see there's a little blue in there, but that doesn't bother me. I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow. It's amazing how far that color, that yellow, will go in that little bit of white. And I'll grab a little bit of the brown again. I've got some paint thinner on my brush to just water it down a little bit, make it a little thinner.
This is a shoreline over here, and this is sort of a land outcropping. It looks a little bit like rocks, but I think it's, I think it's trees. I know that this is Sandy Hook, and beyond this point here, if it was a clear day, you could see New York City. You could see the Freedom Tower right about there. And I'm going to take this dirty brush and pick up some of that blue and start to work on the water a little bit. And I'm going to grab a little bit of this cobalt blue over here, just a little bit darker. Right here is that white water section, so I'm, I don't want to get too deep into that. And the water comes right out of the picture, you see it comes right out. Let's see. The water comes right out here, you can see that. Have you noticed the there's a real gray feel to the whole painting and uh, that's what I'm looking for you know a lot of times you'll see paintings and the, the color just comes right out of the tube and you get these real candy colors that uh, sometimes you know they're just sort of too bright in my view so I'm really knocking these colors down with with the white and a little bit of brown and sometimes I'll use black just to take uh, the 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 brightness out of the color Okay, let's get a little bit of a, a brighter color blue in that sky there. So I'm going back to my white, and I'll grab a little cerulean blue. The, uh, the artist, the guy I consider my teacher, he's a good friend of mine, Francis Cunningham, I don't think he uses cerulean blue. And I, when he said that, I, uh, I kept my mouth shut because I use cerulean blue, and uh, he's, a, he's like the master, so I felt... I'm probably doing something wrong, but I can't seem to give up the color. Ooh, that's ridiculously shocking. Jeez, I gotta break that up. I'm grabbing some of that beach color to break that up. Hmm. See, that's got a green feel to it, you know. Now there's there's definitely some reds in here, so maybe that'll fix that up. I've put a little red on the brush and I'm getting this violet color. And I'll just pull some of that down here and maybe into this beach area here, this real close to the beach where where the water is still. It's kind of almost like a uh, tidal pool area. And the water comes up up here a little bit. Now I'm going to use a little bit of this pure white and deal with this white water. And I also want to give my eyes something to train on and, and start to define this picture. So I'm going to take a little black and a little brown. I don't like that either. It's too brown. A little bit more black. See that brown? There's. I don't like that brown at all. Hmm. Now I'm, I'm grabbing a lot of this beach color here. And then I'm going to go back into my sky here, my sky color that I've got going on. And let's see. See, can you see it on the brush? It's, my brush has got a real green feel, and this has more of a, a blue feel, or gray blue. So I've got to work on that a bit. Sometimes when you feel you start to lose a hope with a painting, then Sometimes that can empower you to just get real big with your brush and start to throw some color and see what happens. 
And you know, that's again, I'm always talking about these these little paintings. They really don't matter too much. And sometimes you get a real treat, and if you don't, it's just a little painting. It's just a little five by seven painting. So this pro this is a huge problem right here, this green color I've got. So I gotta try to mask that up. I'm just laying that paint in there really thick. And while I've got some of that paint on my brush, I'm gonna, you can see if you look at the sky here, where the, where the sky meets the water, there's sort of a similar color. So I'll use that same color there. And then I'll just try to bring it right down. And also maybe in where that those tidal pools are. And you can see the, the water, or not the water, but the beach is real dark here and that's because the sand is wet. So we'll get a little bit of a little bit of that burnt umber on our palette with some of the beach color and darken that up, maybe a little black. A little, a little bit of the sky blue color, maybe just a tiny bit of yellow. And I'm gonna take a dry brush and push some of that paint around. There's also some green in here. I want to get some of those colors. I don't want just a I don't want just one simple color on on the palette here. So I'm using some permanent green and some cobalt blue. And that's a little bit harsh. A little harsh we'll see what happens I'm down in my palette again here and I've, I'm mixing a little black and green in with this sky color and if I go back to the painting I'll try to try to beat that green down a little bit and then maybe push it around with a dry brush All right, now, now I want to bring this beach way up over here and, and really get a, a much lighter color because you can see there's a lot of light, a lot of light in this painting or this photograph is right on the beach there. And so if we get a good amount of light here and some of this white from the waves, that should give us some distance in the painting. Sometimes these really simple paintings, meaning simple that there's not a lot going on in it. It's, it's a very simple landscape, but sometimes they can look great just because they're so simple. And sometimes they can look horrible for the same reason. I, I think when there's less color, they seem to look better. So now I'm really trying to simple this painting down. A lot of crazy stuff going on here. All 
I'll deal with this wave later. That should that should make a big difference when I, I start to throw some warm whites in here. But I'm just playing around with the the under color and mellowing it out a little bit. And this looks like a nice light blue I'll try to get over here. Alright. Uh, let's let's tackle that water again. And this time I'm going to I'm taking the white and a little bit of this yellow and again some of this brown that I have up here on the other part of my palette and let's see if we can get the see how that wave feels like it's rolling it's, it's breaking this is what's called a southeast swell meaning the the waves are coming in from the southeast, the waves are generated by the wind, so it's a southeast wind making that wave. And that's why it's rolling, it's peeling off that way. So if we take the brush and then it's kind of rolling here, it kicks up a little bit. And then there's a lot of wave action right in here, a lot of white water. It's not quite as defined. All right, um, I want to have more light on the beach now. So I'm grabbing some white down here. And we'll just I'm gonna get a little bit of the sky blue and throw that in the on the beach. And I want some of that blue right down in the the deal here. And then I'm grabbing a little of this black. See, this is like sort of a darker. I'm just grabbing little bits of that black and mixing a sort of a brown, black, gray here. And I want to put this, a little bit of it in the water and on the beach and up in here. I keep referring to this photograph, so I'm right down in this area. And now I just want to get some gray and mellow this out. This is kind of hairy right here. There's too much going on. All right, well, I feel the painting's kind of getting away from me, so I'm going to step back from it a minute and just look at this area here. It needs to be darker. See, if we look at that water, it needs to get darker, just like that. So I'll mix up. I'll go back to this sky color. I've got a little black there. I've got some of this cobalt blue. Tad more black. A little bit more blue. Maybe a little bit of this brown. Sometimes I'm afraid to put that brown in there. It just gives a yellow cast. A little bit more blue. Right. Maybe I'll put this paint on there with a palette knife.
Just put a little bit more of the cobalt blue in there. That might be better. This here, and now I'm going to try to make that wave with a palette knife because my painting is so wet that it um, it's going to be hard to get the paint to come off the brush. And a little bit of wave action over on the shoreline over here. Hmm. Tempted to leave it actually. Except for the land, I don't like the brown. Let's uh, grab some black and mix that in here with this sky area. Grab some of that green. And we'll go back to this land I'm taking the palette the paint right off the palette there so it's so it's very gray see the the issue I'm having though is that this Paint on the palette is just too much. Maybe I can scrape a little bit of it away, but still have that white of the, the white water. This area here, I think, could be a little bit warmer, so I might fool with that a bit. And that could be a little bit cooler right in here. Okay, now now I'm going to just try to define that shoreline a little bit, maybe a little bit brighter there. And can you see how your eye goes right to that now? And then this area here I'm just going to clean up. I'm probably going to use a dry brush and you see if I can work that in a little bit. And it's got to be warmed up a little I think is what's happened. I need a little bit more of that yellow. Not too much though. And a little little of the blue right in here. Alright, I'm gonna leave it. Well, I know I said last week that we were just going to do a simple seascape painting this week, uh, but as you can tell, I had a bit of a, a hard time with that painting, but in the end, uh, I feel like it worked out, and I learned a little something, and, uh, and I had fun doing it, and that's really the whole point of this, and the more you do it, the better you get, and for me, um, I don't always paint every week, so this is kind of a good exercise for me. It forces me to try to make a little painting every week. I'm not sure what we're going to paint next week, so I hope you'll tune in and find out. Thanks for watching.